Hi guys, today we are going to take a look to take a talk and a look about some interesting facts about the mating practices of some birds. Uh, so it's it's a very complicated area. Uh, there are so many different species of birds. There are ten thousand more or less in the world, and a lot of these have very very different ways of choosing mates and of bringing the babies up. So I think usually when we think of birds, maybe we I think we tend to think of songbirds the most. You know that they have a, maybe a little bit of a dance and a cuckoo tweet tweet kind of ritual of getting to know each other and choosing each other and then they build a nest and lay the eggs and the pair the the parents feed the babies and and all that um and things are more or less shared uh but it can be very very different depending on the kind of bird you are talking about so let's get started with some an interesting fact about some albatrosses so usually you know when we think of gay people well the no. gayness homosexuality we tend to think of humans more than animals however there are quite a lot of i suppose you could say lesbian albatrosses i don't know if that's exactly the right word to use uh, let me explain. So there is a type of albatross, the Laysan albatross in Hawaii, who, uh, their numbers, they have a very skewed female to male ratio. So for every two males, there are three females. So that means when everyone is paired up, a lot of the females are left on their own. So they actually pair up together. They form bonds, female, female pair bonds and uh, they actually have babies so obviously they get their eggs get fertilized by one of the males who probably has another female another his own wife and uh, they bring up the egg together now usually albatrosses only lay one egg a year so for these females even though maybe both of them would lay an egg they only actually incubate one and uh they're apparently they're not very successful at incubating but once the baby is hatched they have more or less the same success rates and in f as the same success rates as uh, the male female bonds and in fact some pair bonds have been shown to exist for years the females remain together for years and years for example 17 years Moving on, something that you've probably heard about before is the lek. So there are some species who have a, a lek. Um, this is where the males kind of dance and prance about and show off how wonderful and attractive they are, competing for female attention. Now the thing is that these leks usually, like the birds put a lot of effort in, but usually there is just one or two extremely attractive males who usually end up mating with all the females. So the vast majority of the males that year, in any particular year, usually don't get to mate with a female. All the females go for the really attractive male, the highest status male. However, there are some interesting tactics that birds can use to get around this. For example, some of the males hang around the edges of the lek area, hoping to maybe intercept a female as she's on her way to the attractive male. And the thing that I found the funniest is um, there are some males, if they're not like an active lek displaying lekking male, then they might not have the extremely beautiful plumage that the that those males have and they might have the duller plumage of the females so they can kind of blend in and pretend to be a female in order to get a mate <laughs> i thought that was uh, rather rather funny for things and then finally, you know, there is so much more in the world of bird mating, but just one more interesting thing today, and that is females 
their their choice for the highest status male. There was a study done in which scientists removed uh, removed the, hi- the the females of the high status males and the females of low status males in a particular area just to see what would happen. And uh, so within a short period of time, seven other females from other territories had noticed that these birds were widowed. They, they weren't because their females weren't weren't dead but they appeared to be widowed and uh out of seven females who left their own partners six of them moved up in the world and chose a higher status male (laughs) one of them chose a lower status male so it's it's strange but birds can actually they actually call it divorce birds can actually get divorced you know you we usually think of birds mating for life or at least for the, to last the season the breeding season but they can actually divorce sometimes usually it's initiated by the female they leave their partner uh it it can even be mid season leave their partner and go and find a mate that they they obviously think is preferable Well, let me know what you think on the fascinating, often sordid world of birds and their mating practices. And we might talk a little bit more about some of these things soon.